Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made, and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. from the east, and from the west I will gather you. 
I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not yet come upon them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the people were to go with expectation and all the questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them and said, I baptize you with water, for one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the palm of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His windowing torch is in his hand, to clear his special floor and to gather the wheat into his grave. But the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized in spring, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we uh, seem to be somewhere around Epiphany and the baptism of our Lord. Seems confused right now. The way the stars have aligned, we have a movable feast of Epiphany, moved it to today, and today is also the celebration of the baptism of our Lord. So. We hope that uh, uh, this will make some kind of sense, that they are not so much in conflict, but rather uh, in uh, collaboration. So we see that the wise men have made it, finally, to Jesus. Um, yesterday, when we had the work party, uh, someone asked, should we, should we take down the, the manger scene? I said, well, the wise men haven't arrived yet. I feel somehow incomplete if, if, if that happens. Uh, and uh, we also have the readings today for the baptism of Jesus instead of the readings for Epiphany. And we have a combination of music uh, for both occasions as well as reading both colics for each event today. So, uh, I'm under the impression that this is actually perfect timing, that both of these come together. Some of you remember uh, that one of the things I like to challenge everybody to do at Epiphany is when you leave, go back home by a different way. This is in uh, collaboration with the wise men who in a dream were warned to not go back the same way. And I've always felt a little romantic about that idea. That somehow going back by a different way is, uh, is adventurous. It opens you up to a new way of seeing things. Um, and yet now, I'm not that interested in going back a different way. <laughs> Haven't we had enough of change and pivoting and trying something new? I mean, even today was supposed to be a grand celebration for Keller, our youth director, after retiring uh, after 38 years. And as the pandemic raged on, we decided, well, let's move the celebration to June uh, because of Omicron and uh, and we'll just have the prayer of transition today but then we learned Keller was exposed to COVID-19 and could not be here today and so although we will pray for her transition and our transition nonetheless we pivot once again we're always going back by a different way. 
And it gets exhausting. I don't know, anyone else exhausted? <laughs> um, and so this epiphany, it's not a romantic idea to me to go back by a different way. I mean, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> but we're forced, we are compelled, we are committed to going back by a different way. Whether it's the pandemic, politics, or the environment, we no longer have the luxury of deciding whether we are, are up for change, up for going back by a different way, as it were. It's not a fun little adventure anymore. It's like the Israelites who wanted to go back but knew in their heart they could not go back to the way things were, that they had to hope in a future. And that, that's something uh, uh, where epiphany, you know, becomes mandatory, it becomes scary, it's unsettling, it's upsetting, it seems disproportional this year, and overwhelming. And the thing about not going back is that you lose your control. Let's face it. We would rather be settlers than pilgrims. If you're a pilgrim, you, you don't know exactly what your future is going to look like. Being a settler, you can, I, we'll get back to that comfortable place where we know the routines. And it requires trust in what is next. But the truth is, we are overwhelmed this epiphany and that moves wonderfully into the concept of baptism and this is where you'll be exposed once again to my Baptist biases <laughs> I mean I I grew up or was formed in the Baptist Church which really knew how to baptize people. <laughs> None of this fooling around that the Episcopal Church does, you know? A little water on the forehead. Yeah. In the Baptist Church, you come out drenched. In the Episcopal Church, there's a little dampness, maybe, up around here, or somewhere on your head. Maybe a little cloth will help you out. And that seems to me to capture the overwhelm that we are facing. It's not a little bit, it's overwhelming. We are immersed in all these changes and chances in life, constantly dumped underneath. Maybe we feel like we're held underneath. I swear that the Baptist minister held me a little longer. <laughs> I have this clear memory. Like, you know, I wasn't living up to their standard yet. <laughs> Maybe a little longer under that water will change me. And we have been exposed to floods here at St. John's. I remember my very first year at St. John's on New Year's Day. John Seals came up to the rectory where I was living and knocked on the door and he said, you better take a look at something. <laughs> we had had a deluge of water. Our culverts overflowed. And when I walked down here, the water line on the outside of this side of the building was at a foot and a half. The sanctuary was covered in an inch of mud. I remember how surrealistic it was coming into this sacred space with a fire hose and hosing the mud out in that direction. It was overwhelming. It wasn't a leaky pot. It was too much. A little more recent history was the sewage flood, which we have <laughs> had had here. And uh, we came out of that uh, with new entry, new patio, new nursery, uh, new hallway area. Uh, new vesting room. We had to replace all of it. This is overwhelming. I remember 
that it was the day before All Saints Day. And I came in to get my vestments, and there was sewage, sewage everywhere. And the, the toilets were bubbling up. Uh, it was quite an experience to prepare for All Saints Day. Uh, it, I was on my way to, to an event. Uh, and this was yet another overwhelming experience. That, that year, at Christmas time, we literally had a construction fence around the entire building. Some of you remember that. The only way in was around the back. Uh, and yet, people came. The place, the back of the church was gutted, and we, we stuck the manger scene back in the construction and the two by fours. We thought it was very appropriate for uh, Joseph and being a car carpenter and all that to be back there in the construction zone. These are amazing memories of being overwhelmed. So the question, and it's an important question, is where is the water line right now for you? Your feet feel wet? Is it up to your knees? Is it up to your neck? Is it over your head? It's extremely important to acknowledge where you might be. We resist the idea that we are overwhelmed, but it is part of our faith. It's part of our story. Baptism, and I invite you to think about that. Think about yourself as in the water, all the way in, gasping for air, hoping that you are lifted up out of it. And when you've been in that position before, uh, you know that you rely a lot, almost entirely, on the person that's baptizing you, because there's nothing to hold on to. Nothing. You're brought down like this. You are in the water like that. You can't reach the size of the tank. Uh, at least not at the church I was baptized in. And you have to rely on the celebrant, the officiant, to lift you out of that time. This is a time of faith. This is a time to remember that you are not the odd one out. All of us are in that tank. All of us need help at this time. We are not alone. One of the things that is interesting as we struggle through this time is uh, an article that I read by Jeva Lang, who is a journalist for The Week. Uh, and he points out that part of the problem of sorting out our sense of overwhelm is there is no occasion where we come together as a community and acknowledge, let's say, the pandemic. Anniversaries are very important. One of the things I love uh, that we do pastorally at St. John's is we acknowledge the anniversaries of your loved ones who have been lost, the one-year anniversaries. We place a candle on the altar. We offer special prayers. Those anniversaries are tremendously important because they creep up on you and they're there whether you're conscious of them or not. And with a pandemic, what date do you choose? How do you as a community, how do we as a world community, mourn together, acknowledge together, and begin processing the grief that has happened to us. 
is should it be November 17th, 2020, the first known case, COVID, January 21st, when the CDC recorded the first case in the United States, January 31st, when the World Health Organization declared a global health emergency, February 3rd, the date of the first U.S. death. Or March 11th, the date Biden chose in order to acknowledge the date when the World uh, Health Organization declared COVID-19 to be a global pandemic. I think it's a smart thing to, to put something in the record there. Will we return to acknowledge a place in time where something happened to us. It's very difficult when you can't acknowledge that. It even makes it uh, uh, such that uh, we may end up just acknowledging a year, maybe 2020. Remember 2020, or remember 2021 and 21, 20 and 21, 20, 21 and 22. It's important to realize that we are not alone. That we as a community need to acknowledge what's happened and how to move through it. Psychologists say that the most important first step in any healing process is to be able to identify and name where you are emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. And that today, the simple invitation of our liturgy, our celebration, our acknowledgement of this time is to accept that you are overwhelmed. That's where we are. This is a time of overwhelm, but it also means it's a time of faith. I think we have an opportunity to rediscover the basics of faith. That we are not settlers, we are pilgrims. That we are not in control, but we are moving into a future. But that future is a future that God is in. Just as God is with us now, a God is shaping the future. It's an amazing thing to let go. To be in that water. Maybe struggling, looking for something to hold on to, but to trust that you will be lifted out of that. Because yes, we die with Christ in our baptism, and we live in the resurrected life as well with Christ. I'd like to close our time with a meditation. And I want you just to remember that this meditation, which we've already read, thank you, Ken, for reading it so caringly, from Isaiah 43, is it could have been written yesterday. Really, it's about being overwhelmed by waters or anything else. It's about making it through fires. You look what's happened with fires and floods this year. It's about what's happened politically in our world. And I got to say, it was really wonderful to see that our presiding bishop was the person praying on the steps of the Capitol, leading a spiritual moment of healing. Our presiding bishop was the one they chose to offer that prayer. This passage is about that. It's also about family. 
This is a time when we're also overwhelmed by the fact that we can't see family or that we have divisions in the family that are painful or yet unresolved. This passage encompasses every last minute of it. So I'm going to ask you that we start the meditation now and that for the meditation you would listen to these words from Isaiah. Our gracious God, we have declared that we are precious in your sight and honor. Grant that we may faithfully uphold our baptismal vows and share in the reconciling work of Christ. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. 
Your voice, O oh God, is a powerful voice which splits the flames of fire and shakes the wilderness. Guide the leaders of our nation and all in authority with your power and wisdom, that they may serve your purpose of compassion for all. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. You are the creator of all men and humankind. Redeem those who are threatened by waters or fire, by terrors or threat, by exile or confinement. Bring your children from far away and your little ones from the ends of the earth. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. Your creative grace is present throughout this community. Bless our neighbors and region that we may serve one another in the beauty of holiness. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. In the waters of baptism, your voice is proclaimed from heaven and we are your beloved children. Bless all who receive the sacrament of new birth. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. Here are intercessions on behalf of your children, especially those on our St. John's prayer list, remembering this week Daniel, Sandra Davidson, Nick DeGroote, Barbara Derniak, Judith Fleming, and Drew Fleming, Karen Gleason, Bert Hilzebeck, Allison Hogan, Pete Holmeyer, Alan Howe, Bonnie Howe, Kate, for all who live with mental illness and for those who care for them, and for those we name either silently or aloud. In your temple, we praise your name and give you thanks, especially for those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or transitions this week, for those we name either silently or aloud. Yeah. Okay. Receive into your heavenly glory all your children who have died, remembering especially Bob Amato, Prue Canheim, Lori Dickey, Randy Gallagher, Gil Gleason, Lynn Holmeyer, and those we name either silently or aloud. God shall give strength to the people. God shall give the blessing of peace. Your church is filled with expectation at the promise of your heavenly blessing, Almighty God. And we ascribe to you the glory due your name. Let the heavens open and send forth your Holy Spirit to anoint your children in the name of the Holy Trinity, in whom we live and move and have our being forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we are us to be a sin against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness to each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil that on our own have done. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ. That we may abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
social hour or that we have that we don't have coffee we do wine so I want to encourage you to come uh, be a part of that <laughs> and then the next day we have on January 30th we have our annual meeting following the 10 a.m. service we will do that hybrid format so which means you can either be here in person or you can attend online via zoom uh, so that you have kind of both options but we want to get as many people there as possible to make our forum and then lastly, just want to remind you, we are still collecting blankets for Vision Warmth. We'll be doing that through the end of January. So if you have an old blanket you want to donate, or if you want to purchase a new one, or you want to give us money to purchase uh, blankets, we'll get that, uh, you can give that to us, and we will, so, uh, we will get it to Pastor Vinny, who will get it to the homeless. Thank you. Thank you, John. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, transitions? <laughs> Sarah, and Joe, and Sarah. <laughs> Storm's not here, but okay. Oh, both anniversaries? Two, we're 50. 50? We will no longer be 49ers. <laughs> 50, congratulations. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us, with joy-filled hearts, offer the fruits of our life and labor to God.
Thanks for restoring us to your 